Number five is um, I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. I'm gonna take it uh, kind of for and all the older guys, and this is gonna be you know taking it to my side of the spectrum. But um, get rich or die trying by Fifty Cent. Um, this back when I was growing up, I what was I in the sixth grade. This was big. This, yes, and this was also around the time I was starting to get into girls. So as me starting to get into girls, you know, I started to notice what they was listening to. And they was listening to shit like this. And, you know, uh, all the other stuff that started to come out, your Jeezys and your, you know, we started getting, that's kind of basically the birth of going into the Soulja Boy era and D4L and Laffy Tech. We're not going to talk about that. We're just going <laughs> to, all them years in hip hop, we just going to leave them blank and nothing, ha- outside of, you know, like B and stuff like that, Kanye, all right, we're just going to, none of the other stuff happened. I don't know what you're talking about. But real quick, it's funny you say that. D4L, they another one. They changed the game because all them niggas sound like them now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all them niggas doing that shit now. Yeah, for sure. They, they yeah. And, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. That was, you know, if you are going to start rapping, I guess the first ideas of the shit come when you when you in the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth grade anyway. So that's what was out. So that's what was influencing us. But see, get rich or die trying, man. Um, I don't know. It, it, you know, he was, he, I think 50 kind of, at that point in time, he kind of re-brought back the, the thug. He, he, he brought the, the thug image back, but on steroids. Because, and then just, just the, the shit was just, the story I remember hearing about, it, I was like, bro, you hear about this nigga? He a new rapper, and this nigga, he, he big as fuck, but he got shot. Eyes, but he, you know, I was like, and I'm just thinking, I'm in in the seventh grade, nigga got shot nine times. What the what? I'm like, so I, and I just start hearing, and I'm like, this is, I'm like, this is pretty good. I like this. The in the club came out, and then when I actually had the album i remember funny story i remember you gave it to me because you had it on bootleg and i was like please i begged you for it. i was like please I, let me let me have it because I, I couldn't get it no other way so i was like let me just have it and you gave it to me and i listened to it and, and it's like there's something there it's like i really you could really feel his hunger you could really feel um that you know yeah, he was talking about ignorant shit. You, you, he was really, uh, he was, you know, doing ignorant nigga shit and all that other stuff, the stereotypical whatever. But you could tell that there was stuff in there where he really, he showed um, a side to himself that, you know, that a lot of people don't talk about for those type of people. Mm-hmm. You know, he was able to humanize himself in the midst of, you know, all this murder and mayhem and, and jewelry and other stuff. You know, he ain't just as invincible uh, drug lord, whoever you want to call it. And just like you said, so we want to go off of replayability. It's, it's too many songs that I can name that you can just go back and forth. Uh, beats. I mean, he it was produced mostly by Dr. Dre. Do we really need to talk about the beats? And back then, 50 had bars on the, on that on that album. So, you know, it was just one of the best albums, you know, when I started kind of getting into that, that, that darker side of hip hop slash kind of raunchy slash, you know, shoot him and kill him kind of gangster hip hop, you know, um, as opposed to like the earlier, you know, Tupac or Biggie 